Hello, this is Craig, and welcome to another episode of Cruising Off Duty. As you know, we're starting this transatlantic sailing series where I'm going to document the three-week passage we did from Las Palmas in the Canary Islands across the Atlantic to St. Lucia in the Caribbean on this beautiful 50-foot catamaran. In the last episode, I arrived at the boat a little late in the evening on the first night, and I got a tour of the boat. In this episode, I'll introduce you to the other five crew members. We talk about provisioning the boat for the long passage, weather routing and planning, And just a little heads up here, most passages you're worried about running into a storm, but we were mostly looking to find some wind. You don't want to see red on the map because that's storm force winds, but you also don't want to see blue. That means no wind. And I'm going to take you on a little walking tour of the outside of the boat, Las Palmas from the ground, and even better, from the air. All that coming up in this episode of Cruising Off Duty. All right, let's give you a little bit of a lay of the land. Where are we starting from and where are we heading to? We were there around the same time as the ARC and the ARC Plus. And in case you aren't aware, the ARC stands for Atlantic Rally for Cruisers. And what it really is, is a big group of people get together and everybody crosses the Atlantic at the same time. It's a little less intimidating for those who've never done it before. We will be leaving from Las Palmas, which is in the Spanish islands of the Gran Canaria. It's a long trip across the Atlantic, so a lot of people who are leaving the Mediterranean to go to the Caribbean stop at the Gran Canaria Islands as they stop over in provisioning point before doing the rest. There's a saying that you head south until the butter melts and then you go across the Atlantic. That's just the way the wind patterns tend to work, and that's exactly what the ARC Plus does. It goes south and stops at Cape Verde. Since we weren't competing in the ARC or the ARC Plus, we could go straight across whenever we want. We ended up leaving a little after the ARC Plus boats and a little before the ARC boats. To save nautical miles and time, we would have loved to take that top route that just sort of goes straight across, but the way it worked, there was no wind, so we had to head south until we found some. So we pretty much did the ARC Plus route. Although we didn't get to kick back and relax in Cape Verde and reprovision, we just had to keep on going through because we were on a bit of a time crunch. Perhaps we should have stopped in Cape Verde and gotten more fuel. Did I mention that there was next to no wind? But more on that in future episodes. Let me do a quick introduction to the crew. This is our happy smiling faces on the day we're gonna leave Las Palmas. We take another picture like this at the very end. You'll have to wait to see if we look any different after three weeks at sea. Going from left to right is myself, then Paul and Cheryl Shard, then Dave, then on the bottom is Dan and Alex. Over all the footage that's captured over three weeks, you'll get to know these people really well. If you missed yesterday's episode, you missed the interior tour, but I'll give you a little sneak peek of the sleeping arrangements, especially where Dan and I are gonna sleep. (sighs) Hello, people. So this is my bunk, which I will probably, I'll be sharing with Dan over on this side. This is Dan's side of the bed. This is my side of the bed. There's a little extra cushion we can stick in here to make the bed extra wide, but this getting in and out of the bed, it's a bit steep. So we have that empty space. So you have the stairs to get up. And then I'm, I have all my clothes over here and some more storage over here. Dan's got his stuff down there. Most importantly, there's a huge hatch because we're in the bow of the boat huge hatch for air here and he's got a smaller hatch over there on his side i've got the blinds closed but there is a window right there if you want more light oh and also that whole wall is windows so behind that curtain that flowered curtain is more windows you want cool and you want dark when you're sleeping so the windows aren't going to be open very much so this is where i'll probably film from tell you my daily thoughts maybe in the morning when i wake up maybe at the end of the day when i'm tired and about ready to go to bed but uh yeah get used to seeing me in my humble abode talk to you later this was my first full day in las palmas and it was a beautiful sunny day so i thought this is a great opportunity to take my camera which is on a gimbal out for a walk and show you what this beautiful marina in las palmas looks like although i could tell i was getting beautiful shots i knew it would pale in comparison to the drone shots that are going to come up so i decided to walk back to the boat and give you a little walking tour of the outside of this beautiful 50 foot blue water catamaran I gotta say I was really impressed with this marina. I mean, we are in an essence in the overflow parking area. It was so full because of all the ARC participants. And even in this kind of out of the way overflow spot, the docks are absolutely gorgeous. So they seem to have a fair bit of money to throw around on dockage. So here we are. This is my home for the next three weeks. It's a blue water 50 foot catamaran made by Discovery Yachts. I know what you're thinking. This is a brand new catamaran. Does that laundry on the line come standard? Sadly, no that's an extra option. But in all seriousness, this was one hell of a beautiful boat. Very, very solidly built and great uh, views from inside the salon. 
You'll see some doors on the front deck here, and those are actually gonna open up to a tub. Can you believe it? There's a tub on this catamaran. The boat was great to sail with double furling head sails and a furling mainsail. Plenty of soft solar panels on top of the hard top, which goes over your cockpit. Very nice to stay out of the sun and the wind. Of course, dinghy davits to keep your dinghy out of the water. What I like is this boat has sport seating, which means you're sitting halfway up. I prefer that to the fly bridge style because you can still talk to those in the cockpit and the galley from the helm. Although Las Palmas looked beautiful from the ground, I knew it would look even more spectacular from the air. So it was time to get my drone up and check things out. There's our Blue Water 50 catamaran, and you'll notice there's other catamarans around us. They're all participants in the Ark, and they were placed here mostly because catamarans take up a lot of space and the marina's already full. So here's us located over here, and as you pan up, you'll notice the regular marina, which as you can tell, is jam-packed. As I bring you in for a flyover, check out the anchored boats at the top of the screen. You see, if you're not a member of the Ark, in all likelihood, you will never find a spot in the marina this time of year. So your only other choice is the free anchorage just outside the marina. Still not a bad spot. As you can see along the wall, there's people that are med moored, which means they've dropped an anchor and then they tie their stern to the cement wall. Now, med mooring is something I've never had to do with my boat, so I don't know if I'd feel completely confident doing it with so many people watching you. So I think I'd prefer to just anchor, which is something I've done a thousand times. Only issue I see is they're anchored so close together. They're really packed in like sardines, which is probably why these three boats chose to anchor outside of the normal anchorage, just to have a little space. I can see why people use this island as a jumping off point to cross the Atlantic. It's very clean, it's very modern, and it's easy to provision your boat. But clearly, if you're a solo cruising boat, I wouldn't come during the arc, because you may have trouble finding any space at all. Okay, so what else did I do on this first day in Las Palmas? I didn't just fly my drone around and have fun all day. There was work to be done, and that is called provisioning. And Las Palmas is a very easy place to pick up food at a big grocery store, much like the ones you'd see back in North America. There's a big grocery store called Hyperdino located right here. The great thing about this grocery store is they cater to the sailing community. Meaning you go, you shop, you bring it to the cash register, they box it up, and they bring it over to your boat for you. That's awesome when you don't have a car. Morning! Good morning! Good this morning. is the beginning of day two on the boat. Yes. Myself, Cheryl, and Alex are going to do some more provisioning. They did a ton yesterday that's going to be delivered yeah. to the boat, but today we need to do the second half. Yeah, that's second right. half. I do... think we're up to uh, third or fourth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this may not be our last trip. Four carts four today. Carts today. Yeah, we well, got to have enough provisions for six people to live on a boat for two to three weeks. So it's a lot of, a lot of food. So we're going to their favorite place, which is Hyperdino. Hey, you want can't miss it. Now this store had something I'd never seen before. Oh yeah, it grabs on, eh? Yeah, and you go Look at this. No hands, mom, no hands. It, it doesn't work when they're full though, does it? It stays locked? Wow. Yeah, yeah. If it goes, just let it go. Mm, beer. This is old school sailing. It's literally just hooves and legs hanging and they're not refrigerated. And I and I thought it was plastic covered and you touch it and it's greasy. Oh man. It is great because it's in what looks like a regular grocery store. Yeah. Yeah, and um, little different items to yeah. add to the shopping list. It reminds me of like the, the old school sailing days where they had the salted meat because they couldn't refrigerate That's anything. Right. That's right. Some people do get these and hang them in the forward cabin and just slice away at them. But the tip we got from the seminar yesterday was before you get to the Caribbean, them to the fish because the flies will attack. Oh, good. I leave you alone. <laughs> well, I've never seen that before. Okay, so yesterday the ladies, I wasn't with them, they built three of these carts and they, they'll deliver it to the boat. Now, we're already almost getting full with these two carts and we're not even close to done yet. We still have to do another trip where we get all the breakable stuff that we're going to carry ourselves like eggs and chips and things like that. So it's amazing how much food six people eat in two and a half weeks. Just to prove that it does work going down as well as going up with all the weight of all this canned and jarred food. Poor Cheryl's in the line of fire if this thing breaks loose. <laughs> okay, so we're done round three. We have two more shopping carts filled to the brim. Yeah, so yeah with all make, the essentials. <laughs> this will make a total of five carts. Yeah. And we're not done. To go. We still need to go. bread, we still need vegetables, vegetables fruits, fruits, yeah. frozen. All, all the goodies, all the, all all the, the goodies, goodies. all the uh, fresh produce till the very last morning. Yeah. And we've got frozen meat coming that we yeah. ordered from the really great butcher here in, in our last comments. Yeah. And 
uh, we'll do another run this afternoon to finish up, get some specialty things. We're really having trouble finding peanut butter. Yes. And uh, craziness. How can you cross an ocean without peanut butter? Yeah. I, I, I don't, it's impossible. They have a whole aisle of marmalades and jams, but for some reason they can't even sell one peanut butter. A little, little strange. Okay, just for this round, there's eight, I think nine green bins that are going to be delivered just for the stuff we ordered now. So this is just, I think this is the third round of provisioning and we still have more to do. For all that work, we wanted to reward ourselves. Plus, I needed to find some internet. The ladies and I had a nice little coffee in this coffee shop. Good spot if also to get Wi-Fi. Once I found Wi-Fi that was quick enough to download podcasts, update Facebook. That's rare around here. I listen to very slow internet. Okay, so this is day two and it's coming to the end. So as you can see, we've been doing provisioning today, putting stuff away, and Paul, who's over there on the dock talking on a cell phone to somebody, he showed us around the boat and all the working of the various electronics around here. They're all turned off now, but he gave us a run through. Later, Dave, who's sort of become our safety manager, he's uh, gonna go through all the EPIRB and the safety stuff that we need to know when we're on watch alone, you know, fall overboard, know what to do sort of thing. And, uh, where were you? Right here. I was throwing a man overboard. Lost my cap in the ocean. Oh, did you really? Yeah, it That's our safety manager losing his, <laughs> losing his cap already. We haven't even left the dock. Don't record that. <laughs> he says, too late, it's recorded. Um, yeah, so just having a great time here in the Canary Islands, walking around doing shopping today, and of course having such a great boat to be hanging out on but it really has been a challenge to get all this food for six people for two to three weeks We've got a worst case scenario three weeks so that's a lot of food to buy lug here most of the stores deliver but still you got to lug it onto the boat and uh, put it away so as you can see in the background there's these kind of like oil platforms I guess that they're not doing anything now that the oil prices aren't that high they're all just tied up to this big wharf out there and as I showed you yesterday this is where a bunch of the extra catamarans that are going to be in the ARC Rally are uh, tied up. Yesterday there was a big 60 foot massive, I forget what, Sun Reef I think it was there. Now it's a Utremer 5X, so that's a 60 foot long catamaran. As you saw us review on the Annapolis sailboat catamaran comparison videos, we didn't love the 5X because it's very, very thin. The dagger boards and it's designed for speed. And we got a good breeze as you can see from there. Laundry. Got a good breeze coming in here so we're getting some some chop at the uh, at the dock which is good because we need to we need to get uh, used to the boat moving while we're sleeping and stuff get that motion of the ocean feeling so it's not uh, our inner ears aren't all thrown off when we go out to sea. So our, our plan now is to try and get out tomorrow which is the day earlier than we were planning to originally and uh, anchor out at night out in the bay here and just get used to the the boat lurching around a bit at anchor so that uh so that we're used to it so that's the plan being canadian back home i hear it's getting below zero at night and sometimes the high is barely getting above zero so here i am in shorts and t-shirt in the canary islands i can't be happier so even the planning and the getting prepped has been fun okay they came back from their last level of provisioning <laughs> they got a lot and it's all outside everywhere. We're trying to figure out where we're gonna put it all. We will not starve. No, no, we will not. Paul keeps saying we should get more, but... What am I saying? <laughs> no, never mind. <laughs> yeah. This is bread that will not go bad. No, it will get eaten. will last a year. Yeah, lots of, yeah. lots of preservatives. Do we have enough? I think we have enough. I think we yeah. have The next thing to do was weather routing. I'm gonna to try to set this. We can do like 10 days of 12 hours. So this is the Predict Wind software that we're going to use to try and pick the best path. In case you weren't aware of how you get weather routing when you're at sea, what you do is you download files over your Iridium modem to either your iPhone, your iPad, or your laptop. Then you inevitably do what we're doing here, which is you gather around somebody's iPad and you all stare at the screen and decide what your best route is. It's kind of fun. And you do it every single day. Oh, look at our itty bitty teeny peanut butters we found. That's the best we could find. Anyway, back to the map. As you can see, everything that's blue is bad because it means no wind, and we were trying to avoid that at all costs. I mean, the only thing that's really worse than that is too much wind, which would show up as red on the map, but we never really had that problem. We always dealt with lack of wind. 
Although we were surrounded by huge patches of no wind, the decision was made to stick to our plan and leave the following day, and we were just gonna motor if we had to. We figured the wind would pick up eventually, but not so much. But that'll come up in future episodes. So that's it for today. Unless something else exciting happens, that'll be the end of day two. Talk to you tomorrow. Well, join us next episode when we finally drop the duck lines for good and head out into the big blue ocean. It's three weeks of camaraderie, learning new things, and experiencing new things. In fact, the very first day, we experience having dolphins on our bow, which is something I've never had before. So hopefully you enjoyed this episode. If so, take the time and give it a thumbs up. It really helps out the channel. And subscribe so you don't miss the next who knows how many episodes to get across this three-week passage. A special thanks to the patrons that support the channel. Without them, this wouldn't be possible. And until next time, this is Craig signing off, wishing you safe cruising.